What's up, everybody? Let's make a camera bag. I start out by drawing up the pattern using Adobe Illustrator and then printing it out on regular 8.5 inch by 11 inch sheets of paper. Then I glue the pieces together on some poster board and cut it out using a precision knife. I'm trying out a hide called New Haven Veg from Acadia Leather. It's about 4 to 5 ounces in weight and has a really nice soft hand to it and just the right amount of pull up. This leather is just light enough that I can get away with using the precision blade to cut out all my pieces. For the straps, I need to cut a long straight edge on the hide so I can use my strap cutter. I cut the straps at one inch in width and I make sure to have enough for the shoulder strap, top handle, and the two front closure straps. For the lash tabs and the D-ring tabs, I'm using some clicker dies that I had made up and punching them out with a Craft Tool Pro hand-operated clicker press from Tandy. It's worth getting some custom dies made for some of these standard use components because they can be used on other projects over and over again and can save you a ton of time. I'm using some one inch nickel matte D-rings. In fact, all the hardware on this bag will be matching in nickel matte finish that I got from buckleguy.com. Because this leather is a bit oily, I had to really rely on my detail rougher tool to prep the surface for adhesive. Also, I'm using one of the strongest water-based adhesive out there, Aqualim 315, with this awesome needle tip squeeze bottle and spatula. All this from District Leather Supply. Here I'm sewing the three sections of the gusset together and doing a double stitch on both seams just for a little extra strength. Then I'll sew on the lash tabs. And by the way, I'm using the Texo 2750 Pro for every stitch on this bag. And to be sure to cover all the technical questions I get, I'm using 92 weight bonded nylon thread and a size 18 needle. Then I'll set the double cap rivets on both sides and then stitch them to the gusset. Now to the straps. I'm gonna pair them up and cut them down to size. I like to use a one and a half inch round strap end punch, even for the smaller straps. I just like the way that it looks. And because we'll be working with lots of layers on this bag, I'll need to reduce as much bulk as possible. So I'm taking the edges of the body panels and running them through my bell skiver to go from four to five ounces down to about two ounces. I'm a sucker for these tuck locks from Buckle Guy. It makes a bag so much more functional and convenient. It's hard for me to make a bag without them now. I just make a few slits in the leather, push the tabs through the slits, slide the washers over, and then fold the tabs down to lock them in. The purpose of this panel doubles as a couple of pockets in the end, but also hides the back side of the tuck locks and keeps them from banging up the camera gear inside. However, in this case, it could have been done either way because I'll be lining it with foam and Veltex fabric. This piece is only meant to hide the ends of the straps and give a nice, clean, finished look. It covers up three layers of leather, so I need to sky this piece down to about two ounces to produce bolt. Okay. 
I run some stitches along the bottom edge of each strap to hold them in place. But once I sew on the cover panel, it adds another stitch about three quarters of an inch above the first one, which is what gives these straps the strength to hold the weight of the bag, which is especially important for that top handle. Fun fact, I lost some footage here. So pretend you're watching me cut out the foam pieces and gluing them onto the leather. Don't worry, you didn't miss much. I don't work with fabric very often, but I tried out some spray adhesive to apply the foam to the leather and then the foam and leather to the fabric. It actually worked really well, but I had to be careful. That stuff is so tacky, it pretty much sticks to everything. A rotary cutter like this is usually really handy for cutting fabric. I tried it out for a bit, but the blade was pretty dull and I didn't have any replacements on hand. So I ended up using my Palo Santo skiving knife to trim the rest of it. Then I'm going to run a stitch along the top edge of each panel so the fabric and leather don't separate. You guys know I love using these little binder clips to hold the gusset in place. I don't use adhesive except for in the corners. That's usually where things get out of hand, so I like to have a little extra security. Sometimes it can be hard to pair up the corners, which is why I like to skive the edges. But if you need a little extra help, you can always use a heat gun to warm up the leather a little bit and it'll be a little easier to work with. This is where a cylinder arm machine really comes in handy. You can drop the bag down to an angle that's much easier to work with as you move around the corners. If you've ever tried to do this on a flatbed, then you know what I'm talking about. I always backstitch, so this rivet isn't absolutely necessary. But since this is a one-off project, it doesn't hurt to overbuild this thing. Then I'm going to turn the front portion of the bag and start clipping the other side of the gusset to the back panel for the final stitch. Now we're on to some of the finishing touches. I need to install the male part of the tuck locks to the center bar buckles. This is a pretty simple process. It helps to pre-punch a couple small holes in the leather. And using a tiny jeweler's flathead, I'll screw these tiny little bolts into the leather and it'll lock it into place nice and tight. I always seem to leave this part till the very end, but I cut a three quarter inch strap to wrap around and act as a sliding strap keeper. It's not always necessary, but it can be nice to have. Now I'll assemble the shoulder strap using double cap rivets and swivel trigger snaps. Then feed it through the shoulder pad and punch the adjustment holes at one inch increments. I have a pretty standard method anytime I make a shoulder strap but I made this one a little shorter than usual. It's right around 40 inches with the buckle at center hole. So I was running out of time on this project and since I already had a set of these padded dividers from an earlier project, 
I decided not to make another set for the video. They're pretty simple to make using foam, Veltex fabric, and some Velcro tape. If it's requested, I may do a separate video for this. And that's it, we're done. I don't know how many variations of a camera bag that I've made over the last few years, but I just keep coming back to it. I love camera bags. I'm a really big fan of this New Haven Veg from uh, Acadia. As always, I'm gonna attempt to have all of the tools, materials, supplies, everything that I use down in the description with links uh, to hopefully be helpful if you wanna try this out. Big thanks to Texo. The 2750 Pro was the perfect machine for this bag. I used that machine for this entire bag and it worked out great. So if you're looking to get into a machine yourself, give Texo a call first and uh, let them know what kind of stuff you're gonna be making and they'll be able to guide you to the right machine. It's really helpful to have that kind of advice and guidance from people who know what they're talking about. And make sure you let them know what we sent you because that'll give us a little bit of kickback. And we really appreciate that. You know the drill. Go follow us on Instagram if you want some more of that instant content. Just some of the stories, the live streams, do a lot more uh, stuff over there. Um, I love you guys. I love this community. You know, let me know what you think of this bag down in the comments. What would you do differently? And you may or may not have seen it already, but I'm posting a vlog uh, that's based around this project. It's meant to kind of show you some of the behind the scenes stuff, the ins and outs that you don't normally see with these project videos. The reality is there's a lot of head scratching and do-overs and uh, messing up, and I wanted to kind of throw all that kind of stuff along with our personal life so that you can see uh, what goes on? That's it. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye